So here's a recording of the electrodynamics or current electricity part B answers walkthrough. It'll be very similar to the part A answers walkthrough, just different questions. And the first question wants to know, it tells us the power of the toaster and the voltage and it wants to know the resistance. So as usual, I follow my physics problem solving process. I write the givens down, the power and the voltage and I want the resistance. I look on page four of my reference table for the formula for uh, that relates power, voltage, and resistance. I see that P equals V squared over R. Um, so I put in, I substitute my numbers with their units. Do not forget to square the voltage. I cross multiply, solve for the resistance, and get 13.7 ohms. So number two wants to know if you can run this toaster on a 15 amp circuit uh, when the microwave oven is pulling 10 amps. Um, and this is justify your answer mathematically. Well, first of all, you need to know, you need to know, and you probably should have been told, and I know that I've said it a few times um, in the past, is that your house is wired in parallel. That's why all of the outlets in your house are 120 volts, and they're all operated independent of each other. This is important because when we're talking about circuits, the first thing you need to do is identify the type of circuit. We're also making an assumption that this is in a kitchen, but if there's a toaster and a microwave, it's probably in a house, in a kitchen. I think that's a safe thing to say. And what the problem is saying is that the total current um, has to be less than 15 amps, so pretty much up to 15 amps, up to that limit. The microwave is pulling 10 amps, so it wants to know, what about the toaster? If we solve for the current through the toaster, and it's greater than 5 amps, then this is not working. So let's solve for the current through the toaster. I could make a table for the circuit, but I don't really have to yet, because I know that the power rating of the toaster is still 1050 watts. And I just solved for the resistance uh, of the toaster, it's 13.7 ohms. And it's a parallel circuit, and so the total voltage is 120 volts. The voltage for everything is 120 volts. So I know the power, the voltage, and the resistance of that toaster. That's more than enough information to solve for the current. Let's use the classic P equals VI for the toaster. I also could have done P equals I squared R, where P is 1050 and R is 13.7 ohms and solve for I. But this way with P equals VI, I don't need to worry about squaring or square rooting, which people frequently forget. So if we solve for the current through the toaster, we get 8.75 amps. It's not gonna work. Microwave is at 10 amps, the toaster is 8.75, you add them up in parallel, you get 18.75. That's too much current for a 15 amp circuit. So yeah, 18.75 amps is greater than 15, it's not gonna work. It's gonna heat up the wire, it's gonna pop the switch in the basement, and you're gonna have to reset it. You have to run them one at a time. One possible solution is to have an electrician come and run a whole second circuit in your kitchen with alternating outlets. Some people have that. This way your toaster could be on one circuit and your microwave could be on another and you have two 15 amp circuits in the kitchen and then you can run them at the same time. But to answer the question, just having that microwave and toaster on the same parallel circuit running at the same time is not going to work. 18.75 amps is greater than 15 amps. It is not happening. Next page. All right, number three talks about a parallel circuit and it wants us to draw a diagram using the symbols on page four of the reference table. The problem talks about two resistors, a source of potential difference, AKA voltage, and an ammeter to read total current. So I start with my source of potential difference. There's the symbol, make sure you have the same number of long lines as short lines. This is a parallel circuit and I have two resistors in there. Resistor one, and then piggybacking off of that guy is resistor two, as if resistor two were giving a hug to resistor one, as if they were arms coming around, one arm on one side, one, on, one, arm, on, one arm on the other, giving a hug, or even just like a piggyback ride, the same situation. So I have my resistors and my source of potential difference. Now I need an ammeter for total current. I don't care what kind of circuit I have. If I'm trying to measure total current, I'm gonna put my ammeter in series right next to the power supply. 
That's going to be true of a series circuit. That's going to be true of a parallel circuit. Ammeters are always wired in series with whatever they're measuring. And if I want the total current, I'm going to put it right next to the battery in series. Before or after, it doesn't matter, but it needs to be right next to holding hands. So our drawing is, is done. Just one thing. Sometimes people do this, feeling like, oh, well, i got to box it off. i got to like make a little box over here. That is a bad idea. Not only is that wrong, but by drawing a wire like that, you've now created a short circuit. There's going to be very low resistance in this loop right here, um, super high current, and it's going to damage the equipment. You do not want to do that. So there's our parallel circuit. Numbers four and five want two different things. Four wants the total or equivalent circuit resistance. Number five wants the total circuit current. I feel like I need to uh, collect my information in a table. Again, for the table, you have a row for each thing in the circuit. I have two resistors, and then the bottom row is going to represent the total values. The columns are going to be for the classic voltage, current, and resistance, and you can add a column for power if you're working with power, which it didn't ask for power, so we won't. And no, I did not forget that the first thing we do before we solve anything is identify the type of circuit, parallel circuit. And it seems like kind of like a small detail that I keep on beating on, but honestly, you can know what to do with circuits and solve out the problems and do everything correctly and use the wrong set of rules and completely bomb the problem set. Like totally, like absolutely raging fire of, of badness. Um, because if you use the wrong rules, then everything will be wrong. Even though you apply everything else correctly, you made one wrong decision, you pick the wrong set of rules for the wrong kind of circuit, and then everything's gonna get screwed up. So the number one thing you do is identify your type of circuit to make sure that you're using the correct rules. Sometimes you have to do that by looking at the picture. Um, if the elements are holding hands in a series circuit in one loop, um, that's a series circuit. If they're parallel to each other, or kind of hugging or piggybacking, um, that's a parallel circuit. Um, apologies if my analogies are terrible, they make sense to me. I'm really sorry if they don't make sense to you. <laughs> okay, that's all enough rambling. Let's put the information into the table. So we know the values of the individual resistors and the total voltage. Number four wants to know what is the total or equivalent resistance in the circuit. So I can tell you right now that it is not 25 ohms. That is a series circuit. Also, remember how to add fractions. 1 over 5 plus 1 over 20 is not 1 over 25. You can go off running after the least common denominator, which in this case would be 20, and then you could say 4 over 20 plus 1 over 20 is 5 over 20, and 5 over 20 is 0.25, which is true, but sometimes you're going to get numbers that are not as tidy as 5 and 20. It could be 5.98 and 20.26843, uh, and then you're not going to find the least common denominator between those guys. So honestly, just add the two fractions. Keep it simple. You have a calculator, use it. 1 over 5 plus 1 over 20 is 0.25 one quarter. Now this is a super important point with uh, equivalent resistance in parallel circuits. The equivalent resistance is not 0.25. One over the equivalent resistance is 0.25. So when you cross multiply, you get that the equivalent resistance is four ohms. This is also why they use the word equivalent resistance instead of total resistance, because total is literally the sum, and the sum is 25. It's not 25. In fact, the equivalent resistance for a parallel circuit will be less than the individual uh, resistors. That's because as you add resistors in parallel, you're adding more branches to the circuit, there's even more options for the current to flow through, and you are reducing the resistance. So there you have it. Number four, REQ is four ohms. You can stick that in the table if you like. Four ohms. Now this table isn't just to satisfy my compulsion for having to organize the information and write down the givens, but I can also see now that I have total voltage and total or equivalent resistance. And number five wants to know what 
is the total current. And honestly, if I have total voltage and total resistance, I can solve for the total current with Ohm's law. I'm going to squeeze it in right here. What's the total current? And when you work out the math, you get that the total current is 6 amps. I'd say that you can put it in a table, but we're done with these problems, we're done with this page, let's move on. If you're dying for one of my super awesome sound effect situations, that could be like bam, 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 bam. Six amps, oh yeah. Or you could just write it in like a normal human being. Moving on, next page. Okay, so here we have a series circuit. You get a 12 volt battery, 10 ohm lamp, and a resistor. Uh, no meters, um, and number six wants the uh, circuit diagram. There's our battery, there's our resistor, and then it talks about a lamp. Now, for a lamp, or for really anything in a circuit, lamp could be an oven, could be a microwave, I don't care, you can just simply use another resistor. That's not wrong, but they do have a symbol specifically for lamps, so let's use it circle with a squiggle in the middle just like the filament of an old school light bulb just as an aside that's actually how light bulbs work um, electricity the connections for a light bulb the outer jacket is one connection and the little button on the bottom is the other connection electricity flows through the wires so it goes through the wires and it goes through that's a piece of tungsten and then it goes back through and then the tungsten gets so hot that it it glows invisible light you can actually see it it gives off light the filament gets uh white hot and gives off light i have lucas with me he's printing something off the printer he's gonna be making banana muffins you want to say hi bud hi <laughs> so yeah gives off light thank you tungsten now for number seven, they're looking for the equivalent or total resistance of the circuit. Um, I could make a table for this um, and again, identify the type of circuit. It is a series circuit, that is true. But honestly, it says in the problem, I know my total voltage is 12 volts. I know my total current is half an amp. So if I went to total resistance, I can do R equals V over I for the whole circuit. So there we have it, R equals V over I, you do, I get 24 ohms for the equivalent resistance, I don't really need a table. Um, just a word though about significant figures, notice I wrote 24 and not 24.0, and the reason why is that um, the, the quick and dirty rule of thumb with significant figures is you don't want your answer to have more significant figures than the least significant number in your givens list. And I can see that the total voltage has three safe phase, but the current uh, only has two safe phase, and so my answer only has two. Um, it's a lot more complicated than that, but that's a quick rule of thumb um, that kind of summarizes it enough for uh, what you guys need without being so simple that it, it's incorrect. I try to follow significant figures carefully. Um, honestly, in written work, uh, in terms of creating the regions, they um, aren't too strict about it. They are much stricter about making sure that you show the units. Um, and uh, But you'll notice that on the answers for the multiple choice. Um, if you get an answer for multiple choice that is close to the official answer, um, the official answer is rounded for significant figures. Now, number eight wants the resistance of the resistor. The resistance of the lamp is given. This one would be helpful to organize information in our table. So here's our table and our given values. Um, we know total voltage is 12 volts, we know the total current is half an amp, and the resistance of the bulb is 10 ohms. And it's a series circuit, um, and so we follow the rules for a series circuit. Now based on the information that I see here, um, and uh, oh wait a minute, we know the equivalent resistance, we figured that out in number 7, let's add that in too. All right, so 24 ohms. And I know that in series, resistances add up to the total. And we figure out from that analysis that the uh, resistance of the first resistor is 14 ohms. So we have rate, rigor, rigor, rate, rigor, rate, 
Resistor 1 is 14 ohms. Next and last page. Okay, last problem set number 9. 30 ohm resistor, 10 ohm resistor connected to a 90 volt battery in parallel. Uh, we do have meters for this one. We have a voltmeter to measure the voltage across the lamp. Uh, and we have an ammeter to measure the current through the resistor only. So 9A wants a schematic or a drawing of the circuit. Battery, resistor, lamp, voltmeter across the lamp. Remember that voltmeters are connected in parallel. One probe on one side and one probe on the other. It could be on this side too. You could put it on the other side as well. It doesn't matter as long as it's in parallel across whatever it's measuring. Wants an ammeter, ammeters are in series, and it only wants an ammeter to measure the current through the resistor only. Ammeters are wired in series. I can put it on either side of that resistor. I could put it over here if I wanted, um, it's just so long as it's in series with that resistor holding hands. B wants to know what is the voltmeter reading? Uh, well, this is a parallel circuit. So in parallel, all of the branches, all of the elements connected are independent of each other. And if the total source voltage is 90 volts, there's 90 volts across the resistor, there's 90 volts across the bulb. So that voltmeter across the bulb is reading 90 volts, and here is why. In parallel, the total voltage is equal to V1 equals to V2. So the voltage across the bulb is the same as the total, 90 volts. Now C asks for the energy of the lamp. Remember that energy is the same as work. The reason why I say that is because the formulas that involve work or energy, uh, work is used, W is used in the formulas for electrical energy or work. Um, so really we're asking what is the W, what is the work of that lamp? So given information, things that we know about the lamp specifically. So here's our given information about the lamp. It's looking for the energy of the lamp. Uh, the resistance is 10 ohms. The voltage across it is 90 volts. We solve that in 9B. And the time is 8 hours. Um, and it wants to know the energy. Now, the formula I'm going to be using is W equals V squared T over R. However, we do not measure time in hours. We measure it in seconds. Doing a little dimensional analysis, I know there are 60 minutes in an hour. Hours cancel. I know that there are 60 seconds in a minute. Minutes cancel, and so I wind up with 8 times 60 times 60. So 8 hours is 28,800 seconds, believe it or not. So I get 90 squared times 28,800 divided by 10. So I wind up with 23,328,000 joules. That would be 23 megajoules, 23 megajoules, or 23 Michael Jacksons, take your pick. I think there might be a typo somewhere in this problem. Either the resistance of that bulb is not 10 ohms, it's higher than that, or that battery is not 90 volts, but 9 volts. I'll give you an example. A typical 100 watt bulb, which is pretty bright, on a regular 120 volt outlet, um, if you let that run for 10 hours, you're looking at like under 4 million joules. So 23 million joules is a lot. I worked out the math. Um, the wattage on this particular lamp for the circuit would be 810 watts. A 100 watt bulb is bright. 810 watts is super bright. Like, it's possible, but I think there's a typo somewhere. Anyway, the numbers as they are, you wind up with 23 million joules for the energy of that light bulb. So yeah, I think a, a decimal point dropped out on the voltage. It's supposed to be 9, but let's go with 90, and let's just keep going with it, because why not? So D and E are the last problems on the exercise, and D wants the current through the resistor, and E wants the power of the resistor. Um, and we haven't made a table yet. Let's make a table. Here's our table, and another reason to make our table is we now can include power. They're asking about power. 
So let's write down the things that we know. We know they have a 30 ohm resistor and a 10 ohm lamp. So 30 ohms and 10 ohms. And they're connected to a 90 volt battery, even though I think it's 9. 90 volts. Um, and that's all we know so far. We do know that energy of the that bulb over 8 hours, but energy depends on how much time it runs for. So we have the column for power. Power is independent of time. Power is the rate of energy, it's energy over time. And 9D wants to know what is the current through the resistor, um, not the bulb. So, because I, I would call that I1. Now, with this information, I actually have two things that I can do. I can go after the equivalent resistance, which is not 40, it's not a series circuit. In fact, I almost forgot. <gasps> Identify the circuit parallel circuit. So yeah, it's a parallel circuit, um, and so the total, the equivalent resistance is not 40. It's going to be less than 30 and 10. But honestly, I don't care about that right now. I'm going after the current in the first resistor, and I do know that all of the voltages are the same in parallel. If I know one voltage, I know them all. 90 volts. 90 volts. And now that I know that, I can see the voltage for the resistor, I can see the resistance for the resistor, I just need to solve for the current, I can do that with Ohm's law. And so when you cross multiply it out, you wind up that the current is 3 amps. 9E is why I added a column for power in the table. 9E wants to know what is the power of the resistor. Well that's easy, I know the voltage, the current, and the resistance of the resistor, so if I want to know the power, I could just do VI. And if I do 90 times 3, I get 270. And of course, we know that the units for power are watts. Again, I think that's supposed to be 27 watts, not 270, but whatever. And that's it. That's the last question. Um, if you humor me, I can actually show you a way that you can check your work with circuit problems because it hasn't come up yet. Now I'm going to spare you writing out all the equations, but I'm going to talk my way through this. I can complete this table and actually check my work. If I run the resistance equation for parallel circuits, 1 over R equivalent is 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. So 1 over R equivalent is 1 over 30 ohms plus 1 over 10 ohms, which is not 1 over 40 ohms. Please add fractions correctly. When I do 1 over 30 plus 1 over 10, I get 0.13. Remembering that it's 1 over R equivalent is the sum of the fractions. That's 1 over R equivalent is 0.13, so R equivalent is 7.5 ohms. And that's why we call it equivalent, because it's going to be less than the individual resistors in a parallel circuit. I can bang out some quick Ohm's law to get the currents for the second uh, element. I think that was the bulb, and for the total value for the circuit as well. Uh, if R equals V over I, then I equals V over R. So I got that the current through the bulb is 9 amps, and the total current for the circuit is 12 amps. And here's what I'm talking about double-checking your work. I know that currents add up in a parallel circuit. Well, what is 3 plus 9 equal but 12? It all checks out, so you can double-check your work. Now, I can't just leave that table unfinished, so I did P equals VI for the remaining stuff for that bulb, that 810-watt ridiculously bright bulb, and the entire circuit is 1,080 watts. Um, and actually what you'll find is in a series or a parallel circuit, um, the individual powers add up to the total. So thank you for watching this. I hope it was useful for you. You can email us if you have any questions, of course. If you're watching this during COVID-19, uh, the quarantine, um, make sure that you keep washing your hands. Get them nice and clean. They now say that if you go out in public, if you go to a store or something, you should be wearing a mask. That advice is legit. Um, I've seen research from the National Academies of Sciences um, and uh, from the CDC and uh, the American Association for the Advancement of Science, that's the AAAS, they publish science, um, I'm telling you as your science teacher, they are not messing around with that. That is real advice. 
They're not going to start arresting people without masks, but they strongly recommend that you wear one. To paraphrase Cardi B, coronavirus stuff is real. And you can FaceTime or video chat your friends, but please make sure that everybody is far away. Social distancing is a real thing. Even these two people are too close to each other. Far away from each other. I know that it sucks for now, um, but we will get through this. Because do not forget that there is no stopping this spring. The grass is coming, the days are growing longer, um, the weather is getting nicer. And that's not just a nice thing to go spend more time outdoors, um, but as the weather gets warmer, um, aerosolized particles in the air don't go as far, and uh, the incidence of the flu and any other respiratory uh, viruses or illnesses goes down. Um, so there is an end to this. There will be a light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, we just have to stick it out. I will say, uh, do not stop washing your hands. Washing your hands is always a good idea. Um, you should always have those nice, clean hands. Things will look up. Again, if um, we can do anything for you, or if you need anything from us, um, you know, email us. Uh, we are here for you. We miss you very much. Um, and uh, we wish we were back to normal. And, uh, and we will be soon.